time uh, to open your books, uh, your Bibles rather, to Proverbs chapter 4, reading verses 1 through 9. Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 9. Today is Father's Day, and once again, we say happy to you all you dads out there, amen, and happy Father's Day. And we're going to look into the Word of God today concerning what is a father. You know, that, word, that term father is just, <clears throat> in our day and age, has really uh, not really meant to be the real thing concerning a father. And the Bible gives us a lot of wisdom and instruction on to be, uh, to be a father or dad. So Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 to 9, <clears throat> the Bible says, My children, listen to me. Listen to your father's instruction. Pay attention and grow wise, for I am giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my teaching. For I, too, was once my father's son, tenderly loved by my mother as an only child. My father told me, take my words to heart. Follow my instructions, and you will live. Learn to be wise and develop good judgment. Don't forget or turn away from my words. Don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And whatever else you do, get good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will place a lovely wreath on your head. She will present you with a beautiful crown. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that we celebrate our Father's Day, Lord, our dads here on the earth. And we also want to talk about you, our Heavenly Father, today in this message we thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you, Lord God, for, uh, for, for everything you've done for us, Lord God, sending your only begotten Son to die on the cross, to shed his blood, to make a provision so we could receive Christ as our Lord and our Savior. We thank you. We praise your mighty name. Bless, Lord, this message. I pray I decrease as Holy Spirit, you increase within me, and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Now, I just want to say, any of you guys, single dad, single, single guys rather, that are not a father yet, you need to really take down a lot of notes, amen? And, uh, and those of us who are fathers, we need to really take heed and pay attention to the Word of God, amen, concerning this message. Now, how many of you know, church, that more than 20 million children in America live in a home without the physical presence of a father? Millions more have dads who are physically present but emotionally absent, if it were classified as a disease, fatherlessness would be an epidemic worthy of attention as a national emergency. Amen? In today's message, I would like to talk about the importance of being a dad and the influence of what our children see and hear from us as dads. Then I would like to talk about our Heavenly Father in the importance of having a personal relationship with Him. Amen? The Bible instructs fathers to have specific duties towards their children. That is to love, command, instruct, guide, and warn, train, rebuke, restrain, punish, nourish, supply needs, and not to provoke their children. The first point I want to make today's message is this. Each father needs to see the importance of being a dad. How many of you know dads that our children are watching us? Our kids are watching us, Amen. And they can see the every move that we make. And many times we may dismiss this, but how many of you know it's very, very important that we understand the importance of being a father? Amen? Studies have revealed that fathers significantly influence their children's sexual identity. Studies also show that fathers significantly influence the social behavior of their children. If children have a healthy, bonded connection to their parents, they are less likely to use drugs. This has been proven, amen. How I many you know the Bible teaches that we were created for relationship? We're not a human doer, but we're a human being. What I mean by that is many people get caught up in what they do, their daily tasks, their job, making money, doing this, doing that, do, 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 but they ignore or they somehow are blinded to the relationships all around them. And then when time comes, they're not connected with one another. And as a result of that, there is a lot of distance in their relationships, even in the family unit that we live in. Amen? Secondly, each father needs to understand the strong influence of what the child sees in him and hears from him. Amen? What are some of the things children should see in a father that make for a good influence? Well, children should see and feel their father's interest in the things in which they are interested in. 
such as games, grades, school, and friends. See, you know, your little kids are little, um, you know, they're little and they're growing up. Whatever they're interested in. I remember in my day, I used to play with matchboxes. Does anybody here remember what a matchbox is? <laughs> or, you know, all right. Those little tiny metal cars. See, they used to be metal. Of course, now they're plastic. I don't even know if they make them anymore. But anyway, I used to play with my matchboxes and so forth. And I always liked to, when my dad, you know, got on the, got on the rug with me and, and, and played with my matchboxes with me. You know, it made me feel special, amen. He is interested in something that I am interested in. So whatever our kids are interested in, we need to make it a point as dads to be interested in what they are interested in. Amen. amen. It's very, very important. And that's how you connect with your kids, how you connect with your children. Children should see their father working. The Bible teaches that if, 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 if a man does not provide for his family, he is worse than an infidel. In other words, he's worse than an unbeliever. Amen? This makes children understand the value of money and teach their children to be industrious. Amen? Praise God. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5, the Bible says, A wise youth works hard all summer. A youth who sleeps away the hour of opportunity brings shame. Amen? Children should see their fathers express the emotions of love, affection, anger, and fear. How many know that our kids are, need to also understand, dads, that we're human too? That we've got our weaknesses, that we've got our issues, that, that, that they can stand in the gap and pray for us as we pray for them. How many know no dad is perfect unless it's, he's our heavenly father, amen? We have to understand and know, amen, that um, it's okay to hug your kids. It's okay to tell them that you love them on a regular basis. It's okay to tell them that you are proud of them. It's okay to tell them, you know, don't be a perfectionist, Dad. You know, when your kid comes home in his report card and he's got all A's and one B, and you're focusing on that B, how dare you get a B? That's terrible. This is, this is bad. No, don't do that. If they do the best they can, that's all you should expect of them. I remember with me, I went to the Vogue, amen? Pat went to the Vogue. He graduated with me. He's up there in the camera. And, um, and so I used to get some C's and D's, but my mother and father never condemned me. They only said, Craig, just do the best you can do. Maybe spend more time on your homework. Maybe spend whatever. But I was never taught a conditional love. In other words, you get all A's, mom and dad are going to love you. If you get B's and C's, that's it. We're not going to love you. Our Heavenly Father loves us unconditionally. Isn't that awesome? Teach your kids you love them even if they fail, even if they blow it, even if they go way astray from the Lord, even if they're not even serving the Lord. Just continue to love them no matter what. Don't ever give up on your kids. Amen? A praying dad is a very important dad, and our Heavenly Father hears your prayers, amen? Children should see their father at worship consistently and regularly. You see, if you bring your kids up in the pews of a church, of a local church, they're hearing the Word of God every week. The, the seed of the Word of God is being implanted in their hearts, in their minds, in their very being, in their emotions. And then maybe they'll grow up one day, and maybe as an adult they'll stray away from a little while. But, Dad, you have the opportunity to get on your knees and pray that God the Father brings them back again, brings them back to the Lord again. The Holy Spirit can get in places in your kids' hearts that you could never get into. And so when we pray and say, Lord, I'm trusting in you to bring my kids back, that's the thing that we need to do as dads. Amen? The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6, the Bible says, Teach your children to choose the right path. And when they are older, they will remain upon it. Amen? It is the father's responsibility to bring his family to church every week. How many times do we see in America today that the wife is the one who's the spiritual leader in the, in the relationship? And the wife is almost dragging the husband by his ear. Come on, honey, we're going to church today. It shouldn't be that way. The dad is the head of the household, and he needs to go ahead and say, Family, we're going to church today. Family, we're going to worship our God. Whether we feel like it or not, whether it's a nice day or a bad day, we're still going to come to the local church, and we're going to worship God. Amen? That's the, that's the father that God wants to see within all of us. Amen? Now, what are some of the things that children should hear from their father and make for a good influence. Children should hear their father pray. Dads, how many of you know that prayer is not only for in church, but prayer is also in the home? They should hear you in your bedroom, in your prayer closet, wherever that is in your home, praying, amen, praying for your kids, praying for your wife, praying for uh, people, uh, praying for anybody else. And, and, and your kids can see that you are a dad who is a man of prayer. 
And then they'll also follow suit and start praying as well. Amen? Amen. Children should be led to pray for their pastor, the sick, people in trouble, and the lost. You know, grab your kids. They're four or five years old. It doesn't matter how young they are. Hey, come on, son. I want to pray about something. I want you to join me. Let's pray about this situation going on right now. Aunt, Auntie Maggie is sick, and let's pray that God would heal her. Let's stand in the gap and pray for these things. Amen? Let's, let's pray together. How I many of you know that's so very important, dads? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9, the Bible says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. He uh, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and we, when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. How I many you know it's important we talk about the word in our homes? Talk about the Bible in our homes. Amen. Praise God. That is so very, very important to keep the word of God consistently going in your, in your children's minds and hearts. Children should hear their father talking good words about others. Somebody say good words. You know, dads, you shouldn't go home, and I thank God, I don't think any of you do this. You shouldn't go home and say, well, Pastor Craig went a whole 10 minutes over in the sermon today. I can't believe this. <laughs> in other words, don't talk negatively about people with authority that are in your lives because your kids are going to do the same thing that you're doing. Talk positively. Somebody say positively. You know, that's what, the Bible warns us about the sin of gossip. Don't ever say something negative about somebody else, amen, behind their back. That's called gossip, and it's absolute sin. Somebody say, I'm so happy that I don't do that. Amen. Glory to God. Children should hear their fathers upholding the roles of leadership and authority, such as pastors, school teachers, police officers, etc. We need to teach our kids respect. Respecting people in office, respecting people that are on the road, respecting other people that are elders and so forth. Children should hear their father say, I love you, and call them by name. How many times, I don't know how many times I've counseled with couples in my office, and I ask them, and I say, you know, how were your mom and dad when you were brought up? Did your mom and dad show affection towards each other? Did they bond together? Did they show emotional connection with one another? In other words, when they're walking down the street, were they holding hands with one another? Were they hugging one another? Were they saying, I love you, on a regular basis? Or were they just kind of distanced towards one another? Two ships in the same night living in the same roof, yet they have no connection or relationship. How I many you know affection is very important, amen? It's okay to tell your kids you love them every day. It's okay to hug your kids. It's okay to be there for them. It's okay to tell them you were very proud of them, amen? If little Johnny is five years old and he says, Daddy, I want to be a doctor when I grow up, don't shoot his dream down. Say, Johnny, you'd make a great doctor. I can just see that. Come on, I'm going to help you. I'm going to pray that God would lead you in that direction. Don't get on the, the, the financial trip. Do you know how much it costs to go to med school? And you know who's going to be paying that bill, little Johnny? You have no idea. Don't even go there. You just let him have his dream, and you back him up with the dream. Amen? Children should hear their father openly and unshamably condemning evil and injustice and wrong. We've got to stand up for what's right. We've got to stand up for the word of God, which is the absolute truth. We've got to stand up and tell our kids what is true and what is false. Because don't leave it up to the school system to do it because the public school system is just telling kids a lot of stuff that are contrary to the word of God. We as parents, it begins in the home. One person one time said, I'm going to send my kid to a Christian school and I'm all set. I don't have to do anything else. They'll become a great Christian. No, it begins in the home. It's great. Christian schools are great. I'm not knocking that. But I'm just saying that how many of you know in the home is the main thing? We've got to show our kids Jesus in our homes. Amen? Children, you see their father discipline them when necessary. How many of you know discipline is a good thing? He who spares his rod hates his son, the Bible says. Amen? You know, uh, my father gave me some good spanking when I was little, when little Craig got out of line. And I think God put the padding on my back, on, on, our, on our behinds for a reason. But that taught me respect. It taught me that he's the authority in the family, and if I get out of line, I'm going to be punished. 
And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. I'm glad because, you know, if you don't, if you don't discipline your kids when they're bad, when they're 17 or 18, they're going to end up in jail, and the authorities are going to have to discipline them. I'm going to go 100 miles an hour. I don't care what you say, officer, and I'll mouth off to you and tell you where to go, and I don't care what you say. They'll end up in jail. Somebody say rebellion is not of God. Even God, God disciplines you and I, doesn't he? He brings us to the woodshed sometimes. Glory to God. Amen. Proverbs 29, verse 15, it says, To discipline and reprimand a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. How many you know the Bible has the answers for all these things? You see, we can't look at society and say, how should I bring up my kids? No, we look at the Bible and say, how should I bring up my kids? Amen? Proverbs 29, verse 17, discipline your children, and they will give you happiness and peace of mind. Proverbs 15, 20, it says, sensible children bring joy to their father. Foolish children despise their mother. Proverbs 23, 15 says, my child, how I will rejoice if you become wise. And Proverbs 23, 22 to 25 says, listen to your father who gave you life. And don't despise your mother's experience when she is old. Get the truth and don't ever sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and discernment. The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure it is to have wise children. So give your parents joy. Make, make she who gave you birth be happy. Somebody say happy. What about our heavenly father? Now maybe some of you, you know, your dads have passed away. My dad passed away several years ago, two decades ago. It was 2001 when he passed away from cancer. But the good news is three months before he died, he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. Even all that time when I, was, when I was a Christian trying to share the word of God with him, years and decades went by, and he said, no, no, I don't want this Jesus. But three months before he died, he accepted Christ. I had the privilege of doing communion with him individually at Lawrence General Hospital and so forth. Amen. At the end of his life. How many you know, church, you never, ever give up on anybody? Amen. Amen. Now, what about Heavenly Father? Number first point I want to say is to all who believe, to all that believe, He is our Heavenly Father after we accept Jesus into our hearts to be our Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians 6.18, the Bible says, And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The only way for God to be your true Heavenly Father is to say, Lord Jesus, I repent from my sins. I receive you into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Then, uh, God the Father is our Heavenly Father, amen? Somebody say, praise God, amen? How many of us have made that decision? Raise your hand. What a great decision, an eternal decision that we've made, amen? That's the most important decision you're ever going to make in your entire life. Our Heavenly Father is, secondly, an example to follow. 1 Timothy 4 and 12, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. This is Paul the Apostle talking to Timothy. He's sending him his first letter. Timothy was a young minister of God. And Paul says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Amen? So Timothy's a young minister. Paul is a spiritual father. And he's raising Timothy up in the things of God to be a pastor and to go ahead and preach the word of God. How I many know, church, it's an awesome responsibility that Timothy had. Amen? In word, lifestyle, giving sacrificially, all that you are, faith, and pure, and, and morality, all these things. How I many you know, we've got we've to, Lord, help me to be in your word. Help me to live a good Christian lifestyle. Help me to give sacrificially. Help me, Lord God, to have the faith that you want me to have and to remain pure. Amen? Praise God. We live in a society with many, many temptations. But how I many you know, we've got to shun those temptations, not give in to them in the name of Jesus. If you want in your Bible, if you have your Bible, turn to Philippians chapter 2, reading verse 12 through 16. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 16 in the Word of God. The Bible says, it's talking about shining brightly for Christ. Amen. How many you know we've got to shine brightly for Christ? Amen. Verse 12 says, Dearest friends, you were always so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, you must be even more careful to put into action God's saving work in your lives, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Notice what that says, obeying God with what? Deep reverence and fear. 
We have, to rever we have to respect the Lord at the highest degree of respect. We have to walk in the fear of the Lord. Amen? Verse 13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. So whenever you say, Lord, I'm so weak, how can I do this? How can I live this Christian life? It's all about the Holy Spirit living this Christian life through you and giving you power in order to live it. Amen. It's not about you and I having willpower, but we rely on God's power. It's about, it's about submitting to the Lord and saying, Lord, I've got this weakness. I submit that over to you. Please give me the strength to, to overcome that weakness and help me to have victory in and through that in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, it's not about us. It's all about God. It's all about him living through us. He gives us the power to do what pleases him. Verse 14. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. How many know as Christians we shouldn't be complaining and arguing? Oh, I don't believe it. It's Father's Day. Yeah, it's a gray sky. I plan on having a cookout. What am I going to do if it rains? How about this? Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you. It's Father's Day. Thank you. You woke me up this morning. Whether I have the cookout outside or inside, it doesn't make any difference. Lord, I'm still here, and I praise you either way, no matter what happens. We've got to stop being, living our lives concerning um, other outward things that we don't like. To be a mature Christian is, even though stuff isn't going very good in your life, you're still going to praise God. You're still going to worship him. You're still going to magnify his name, no matter what. Don't live your life based on uh, living a perfectionistic, everything's got to be perfect life. Because that's never going to happen. It's an unrealistic expectation anyway in this life. Amen? So in everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. You are to live a clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of crooked and perverse people. Let your lives shine brightly before them. Hold tightly to the word of life so that when Christ returns, I will be proud that I did not lose the race and that my work was not useless. Verse 17, but even if my life is to be poured out like a drink offering to complete the sacrifice of your faithful service, that is, if I am to die for you, I will rejoice and I want to share my joy with all of you. And you should be happy about this and rejoice with me. I went a little over that, but, but how many know what the Bible gives us instruction on how to live? The Bible teaches, how many know that our tongue is very, very powerful? It's a very small member on our bodies, but it's extremely powerful. James, in the book of James says, a huge, huge ship is, 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 is directed by a little rudder that steers that ship in certain directions. Our tongue has the power of life and death. We can speak life into somebody, or we can speak death into somebody. So how many of you know when we, uh, when we go ahead and complain all the time, we're releasing the complaining? Well, I don't know about this. I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm going to have a bad day. Well, you just confessed it, and that's what's going to happen. How about waking up? Lord, thank you for a beautiful, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for another day of life. I praise your mighty name. I'm going to have a great blessed day today because, Lord God, I know for sure that you're going to bless me. Thank you, Jesus. You just set yourself up for a great day. See, it's not about our outward circumstances that we have to be controlled by, but it's all about what the Word of God teaches and us to have the right attitude in life. Amen. Somebody say glory be to God. Amen. What about our Heavenly Father is a comforting touch? I love 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. It talks about comfort. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Now, why does God comfort us so we can comfort other people? Amen? We can help them. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that you share in our sufferings, and you will also share in the comfort that God gives us. You know, when God blesses us, it is used for us to bless others. When God comforts us in our time of trouble, it's time for us to comfort other people in their time of trouble. Amen? So how many of you know when we reach out in the name of Jesus, we're the hands and feet of the Lord. We need to reach out and help this lost and dying world. 
We need to help our brothers and sisters in church if they're going through a tough time, if they're discouraged. Whatever the case might be, we need to be used of the Lord. Amen? We know that God is merciful. He is patient. I mean, our God is patient. He is strong, and he, is, he loves us unconditionally. Amen? Our God loves us unconditionally. Glory be to God. Fourthly, our Father is a teacher to listen to. Ephesians 1, verse 17, it says, Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give, our, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. How many know he gives us that insight that we need? So that we're growing in the knowledge of God. We know that our God is trusting. You can absolutely 100% put all your trust in God. He's never going to turn on you. He's never going to go ahead and betray you. He's never going to go ahead and abandon you. You can walk away from him with your choice because he gave you a free will, but he's not the one that walks away. I told you about the story about the elderly couple. They were going for a Sunday drive after church on a Sunday morning. And so they had one of these uh, beach wagons. You know, remember the beach wagon cars a long time ago? They had the big bench seats. They didn't have bucket seats like we got today. The bench seats. So... The, uh, the husband's driving behind the wheel, and the wife is over on the passenger side, and as they're going down a beautiful country road on that Sunday afternoon around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the wife looks over at her hubby and says, you know, you know, sweetheart, we've been married for so long. I remember the days where we used to cuddle up as we were driving. And he, she looked at him and says, why don't we do that anymore? And then he looked at her very kindly, and he says, sweetheart, he says, I've always been the driver. I've never moved. So in essence, somehow she had distanced herself from him, but yet she was blaming him. Many times you and I distance ourselves from our Heavenly Father, and we say, God, why did you distance yourself from me? It's us that have distanced ourselves from him. Have you continued to be in the Word of God the way that God wants you in every single day? Do you study the Bible every day? Do you come to church regularly? Do you pray regularly? If you start getting away from these spiritual disciplines, how many know you're going to feel like God has distanced from you? But in essence, in reality... You have distance from him. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, I don't want to be distanced from him at all. I want to be as close to him as possible. We address our prayers to our heavenly father. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Disciples come over to Jesus one day to say, Lord Jesus, teach us to pray. We see you praying. Please teach us to pray. Verse 9 says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How I many know we address our prayers to our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus? Amen. Our Father rewards us. Matthew 6 and 1 says this. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Amen. So what is he saying? You know, we do good deeds publicly, and we want to be pumped up by what I did this, and I did that, and I did the other. Aren't I special? Aren't I great? Aren't I spiritual? No. Do those in secret, and your Heavenly Father is going to reward you. Amen. Our Heavenly Father disciplines us. Hebrews 12, verses 5 and 6. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Thank God for his discipline. Amen. If we get way out in left field somewhere, you know, if God gives us a little spanking to bring us back to him, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Amen. Praise God. Our Heavenly Father is awesome. Somebody say he's awesome. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. David will call out in Psalm 89 and verse 26. The Bible says, and he will call out to me. You are my Father, my God, the rock of my salvation. You know, we're studying the Psalms Wednesday night Bible study, and over and over again, David gets into trouble, and, and something's going on in his life. People are attacking him. They, they want to kill him in his life, and one minute he's crying out to God, you know, Lord, Lord, deliver me. And the next minute he's praising God and worshiping him. How I many are we to praise God and worship him regardless of what happens to us? When we're going through a tough time, get on your knees and pray, Lord, help me through the situation that I'm going through, Lord. I know you're there for me. I know you're there with me, and I know you can get me through this. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. What about the word Abba? Abba. 
It means having an intimate relationship with God. Mark 14, 36 says this. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. In other words, your will be done. Irregardless of what I want, your will be done, Abba, Father. Amen? Romans 8 and 15. <laughs> For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Somebody say he's daddy. Yes, daddy. You can call him. Daddy, I come to you right now. Amen? Abba, I come to you right now. Lord, I come to you right now. Amen? Praise God. You know? How many of you know he's for us? He's not against us. He wants the very best for you and I. Amen? Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says, and because you are sons, God has set forth the, sent forth rather the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. How many of you know, church, that when you get married and you desire to have children, that's an awesome responsibility that you desire. It's a very important responsibility you have. Amen? When those kids are born, they're relying on you. Be a good father. Be a father that lines up with our Heavenly Father's word. Be a dad that, that you just cry out to God for your kids that you want them to live a godly life that you want them to serve the Lord with all of their hearts, that your grandkids will also serve the Lord. Pray for them on a regular daily basis, whether you feel like it or not. Be there for them. They're going through a tough time, understand them. If they go out left field for a little while and they're getting involved with things that are not good or sinful things, you love them irregardless of what they're going through. And you be there for them, not against them. So dads, how many you know we got a big responsibility? The kids are watching us. They're seeing our words. They're seeing our actions. They're seeing what we're doing. And how many know we want to be a good example to them? Knowing that we're not perfect. Knowing we got our stuff we need to deal with. But also knowing that God loves them so much. And you dads have an awesome responsibility. Amen? So conclusion is this in this message then. God is a father you can follow anywhere, anytime, and in any place. Are you that kind of a father? Are you a father that your children can count on. Amen. Happy Father's Day to you dads. Let's stand on our feet and close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for the service today. We thank you for every person that's here, for every person that's watching by live streaming. We said a lot. We said a lot of verses of scripture concerning being a dad today. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We love you, Lord God, with all of our hearts, mind, soul, body, and strength. I pray, Lord God, that we would be uh, sons of you that would really, really please you, Lord God. Help us to repent from our sins, Lord, and grow in our relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for that, and we praise you. We magnify your name. And Lord, help us never to forget that our Heavenly Father, according to Psalm 68, is a father to those who are fatherless. And Lord, we thank you for that, and we praise your mighty name, and we ask this all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. amen. Praise God. If you want prayer, please come on up. If not, feel free to stick around for some fellowship.
glasses. Such a great message in both of them. This next one is, um, we've done this once before. We don't need, we don't need any more than one reason, but 10,000 reasons to, to sing and praise. Mm. We have been Bless given. the Lord, oh my soul.
That is our prayer. We're all forgiven and we live our blessed life because of the blood of Jesus.
See you.